Wait, yeah, now. Yep, go. Now? Go? Now. Now, okay, I guess we're going. Yeah, we're going. This is Podkit episode two. It is. That, that's it. That's it. That, that's the whole right, show. We're done. This, is, oh, Mike. this is who we are. This is what we're doing. That's we're doing it. it, the show. This is the show, right? Thanks for listening, guys. Okay. That was it. Have a good one. This is Podcast Episode 2, Aluminum Sport 42 Nanometer, on Sunday, May 31st, 2015, and now, that can't be the title again. This episode of Podcast is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. <laughs> Any which way, um, not to work in awkwardly. You know, that, so that, that can't be the title week. again. You can't say it 12 times. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to stop myself. At least I'll, I'll try to bring it down to 11. Okay, that's fine then. Perfect. <laughs> so, what's new this week for you, Brandon? You got a new, new, new accessory. I did indeed. I, my Apple Watch finally came in. It, it was about uh, a month early, which is awesome. I'm Fantastic. glad for that was not expecting that literally uh last weekend basically i got a notification from apple saying it's coming in like three days that's pretty darn cool that's how um, mine was too yeah i mean and it's it's so weird how they're able to uh, you know how they how they set you up for june and then all of a sudden it comes and it's not june which is you know good, good on apple for doing supply chain management but well was, I'm, I'm glad they have you know say june and it comes earlier rather than later Thing June and it comes in July. Yeah, or totally. Like every Kickstarter, mm-hmm. preparing for shipment and it waits for four weeks. You know, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. definitely. But I am, I am absolutely, I am absolutely uh, loving it. Like, absolutely. Um, so remind, remind us uh, which Apple Watch you got. Oh yeah, that's right. I have uh, the uh, Aluminum Sport forty two net forty two millimeter. I've been doing that all <laughs> the time. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you can, I can't even see it. The touch targets are just like um, <laughs> impossible. At you know, it's basically holographic. <laughs> basically holographic, indeed. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if you guys. Well, both of you guys saw that I made a Twitter bot for it. Eh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, short-lived watch. but funny. For a Twitter while, bot. it tweeted really quickly in like a period of twenty minutes or something. Yeah, man, those trucks move fast. Stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. It it moved from like. Canada to Kentucky to Minneapolis in like a matter of what a funny route going to uh, Canada Ontario. Oh, you know what? It's not it's not Canada. It's California. Okay, that makes sense. So, okay. but it I was Ontario. I... I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. See, so Ontario, Ontario, California is a very different place than Ontario, California, or maybe it's not. I don't know. I've never been to Ontario, Canada. About the same. California, but it's longitudinally different, at least. Um, they're they're like hundreds or thousands of miles away. Totally. Any which way. Oh darn! I did it again. Oh Any, well. <laughs> anyhow, um, regardless. You know? Did you did you listen to the Google I/O one? I I love the Ian Buck moment when he said, "Any which way." <laughs> I haven't that, gotten there yet, but oh my gosh, I can't wait. That can't that wait. sure that made me smile driving home from work. So among it's, our shows, you know, we we pick up on each other's, uh, you know, gimmick and we, we, you know, magnify it. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So tell us about the watch. Uh, so I've, I've had it for literally three days now. Um, the first day I was a little bit freaking out because the battery life was not as stellar as I'd anticipated. Mm-hmm. So I, I uh, took it into work. I used it to control the sound of my Bluetooth speaker in my car, used it to control the the uh, sound of my headphones when I was at work. Used to track my bike ride as I was um, going from one office to another office and back to the other office and back again to the first office um, or the second office. Math. Um, any which, anyhow. Ooh, 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 ooh. I did it again. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning slowly but surely. Um, ba- basically, by by noon, we were at 40%. And I was like, That's oh tough. my gosh. I mean, I, I go to work pretty early. I was in at about seven, but um, I mean that's like a normal work day for most people. Yeah, it 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 just made me feel like I don't know this might not work out so well. Um, but then the next day, um, the next day it was just fine. You know, mm-hmm. essentially the same same deal, same amount of use, uh, same amount of time 
running the uh, the uh, Bluetooth speaker and running the Bluetooth headphones and all that stuff. Right. Um, of course, the the Bluetooth part that was connected to the headphones of the speaker was coming from the watch, but the, as far as the controls, I probably interacted with it about the same amount. However, I didn't read Twitter on it. I think that was the main thing. Mm-hmm. I think the first day I spent about a total of maybe 45 minutes while I was waiting on the bus or whatever, um, scrolling through Twitter on the watch, and I think that is what killed that me. That sounds miserable. Yes, it was so slow. It was very slow. Yeah, but... that would probably do it, because that's a lot of data to send back and forth. Yeah, lots of lots of was that with the the twitter app the yeah app? yeah see i i wanted to use the twitterific app but the twitterific app wasn't wasn't uh it doesn't do that it only tells you your mentions and it tells you your uh followers and it tells you your favorites which is great i actually at first i was a little bit sad that it did that that it was so limited but then the more i looked at it the more i was kind of intrigued and the more that i decided that maybe that fits in its own kind of niche even though it doesn't seem immediately as useful as the twitter app the official one so i use i use tweetbot as you all know and brandon you do too i think yeah Um, and so they they doesn't have an apple watch app i think paul haddad the developer yeah said something around when the apple watch came out that he's not going to make an app other than calcbot which was released when he never had an apple watch to test on and there hasn't been an update so it it works pretty well yeah But, but he wants to i think wanted to wait to test it out so I'm hopeful that it might eventually come out, but we'll yeah. see. But the no- notifications on your iPhone and iPad and support the new iOS 8 things where you can respond to something from its notifications. So you can favorite or retweet. Yeah. And so that goes through to your Apple Watch. So I can still favorite or retweet something on my so- Apple Watch through TweetBot, even though there's no Apple Watch app, which I think is really nice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. I, I like that a lot too. The trick is... Most of the, well, you know my my rather unfortunate Twitter situation where I'm following like 10 times as many people as... as uh, You should. As I should, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, 1,463 following. Uh, that, that's that's the number of people I'm following. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. That's, a, that's like 150 more than I remember it being when I saw you over spring break. Yeah. Yeah. I like people. That's good. For the good. most part people are cool so my most recent the most recent people that i followed are um sasha zlanian who is the a producer for american public media i um, over in st paul uh a, a pr professional for mall of america uh jesse grosjean who is i totally butchering that name who's the guy who did task paper and write room mm. um dan provost he did a really great uh uh inquisitive with mike hurley about um one of my favorite sufjan stevens albums which I'm going to mute myself for just a moment, but you guys keep going. Roger that. So, uh, yeah, those are all people that I followed in the past, like, four hours. So okay. that's, that's a lot. I'm, you, have you ever th- thought of just making lists and watching the lists for people rather than following them? Or you, have, kind of the opposite. you follow a lot and then use lists to follow people you really want to see? Yeah, which is, I, I, I definitely do that. And then I think that that is not a good way to go about things. So I have... Yeah. I have I have a list of I have lists for a couple different things: uh, communicators, uh, web developers, iOS people, uh, and then I'm also I also maintain like a a, a list of people that I met uh, when I was at Signal last last week or two weeks ago. Okay. Um, and then I just have one that's called the Unmissables that has a bunch of people who is I that a private really, list? That is a private list because I'm not listed <laughs> from what I can what? see. No, you should be in it. You're in it right. Or I think your tech one is. That's probably it. Well, yeah, I see that, but I don't see. I think because it's a pr- private list, you can't. I can't see that I'm in the list. Yeah, at least Tweetbot doesn't tell me I am. Maybe oh, Twitter does, but I don't. Yeah, really yeah, I think you're right about that. I think you're right about that because you are. You are definitely in it. Okay. I can confirm it right here. I see how it is. You don't. You don't care about me. You just care about my thoughts on technology. No, I, I have your. Uh, I have your personal one in too. I don't, psh- I just follow you with both accounts, so I see your, if I don't see it in one account, which is a rarity, I'll see it in the other. No, Same totally. With Brian. Totally, yeah. He probably sure. is acknowledging, but his, he's muted. So. I am not muted anymore. Ooh. Hey, welcome back. Hi. There was loud noises, so I had to take care of it. Understood. Gotcha. Understood. No. Yeah, All Twitter right. Twitter management's kind of tricky, which brings us to another thing that we'll probably talk about later. Uh, but it's... I mean, I've been on Twitter since 08, and I mean, that's that's whatever. What's your Twitter user number? I am on, Hold on I'll find it. up right now. Your but... number 16,607,897. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only 16 million. 
Only, I'm only the 16 millionth. Yeah. That's pretty good though. You, you like, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I followed and, and was mutually followed by some, by, by like a uh, Barack Obama's presidential account back when he was doing that or not his presidential account, but his candidate account back I when see. he did that. And, um, and like David Pogue and Christina Warren. And fortunately cool. the latter two haven't unfollowed me yet because they're really cool people. And it's kind of fun to say I'm followed by them, even How though many people they follow. Thousands, uh, millions, tons. Yeah. Well, well, David Pogue. Mr. 85% is, man. Yep, that's him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he follows uh, a few more than I do. 1,771, but he has 1. Okay. 1.56 million followers. Yeah, so that's your, yeah. He probably doesn't see your stuff very often, but he does see it several, so, every time. Yeah. Like, I can DM him sometimes, and, and he's cool about that, which is nice. That's do you cool. talk ever with him over DM or every, every once in a while? Like he had, he's every once in a while back when he worked for the New York Times or oh my gosh when he did Nova, I oh, I yeah. was yeah I DM'd him about Nova a couple times. But uh, and then Christina Warren is awesome. She's uh, she used to be at Two Wow, now she's at uh, Mashable, um, and she's she actually did the crossover episode of the ATP. Um, yep. Did you get? Have you guys listened to that yet? That was that was awesome the the rocket atp crossover there where syracuse went to rocket and uh i don't i haven't listened to that yet it was it, it's really good i'm about halfway through both of them i'm basically halfway through almost every podcast that's currently in my queue right now probably means i should just sit down and listen to the rest of all of them but you don't have to do it in order it's okay that's that's what the work week is for right exactly <laughs> if anything says anything about my drive i i had one minute left on the google io podcast by the time i got home which i started right before i left work mm-hmm. oh my gosh I got my car started it and drove away a minute later well at least you didn't listen to the fringe because that would have taken another hour <laughs> i don't listen yeah. to the fringe i'm sorry that's okay you're better <laughs> off but ryan you are twitter number 20 million one hundred twenty three thousand six hundred fourteen. 614 yours in february of 2009 so yeah. just four months later now do you then, i wonder if those numbers are correct those can't be actual people well, it's a number of accounts. Um, whether whether or not know. they've been deleted or their bots are blocked, I don't think. I don't know. I, think I wonder if those to- those IDs are actually real and they're not inflated somehow. But think of the amount of spam bots that are created. Yeah, tons. Thousands and thousands. Yeah. That's true. There are a lot of those. And then I made my B-Man 49 account in 2009, July, and I'm 56,034,629. That's ridiculous. Whoa. And then, but then what really gets out there is my tech account, which I made in March of 2012, is 517,237,718. Now, let's see, um, my Weather by Brian is a reuse of an account I made, uh, no, sorry, Morris Emman Weather is an account that I made in October 2013 that I reused, but that's Twitter user 1.931 billion. And then, um... Weather by Brian is Twitter user 3.195 billion. Wow. Twitter's big. And that's from May. Twitter is big, that's for sure. Not quite as big as Facebook, I guess, but... Yeah, but nobody likes Facebook. It's still pretty big. Yeah. I lurk a lot, but I don't do much on there. I post photos every so often. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I post, like, maybe one picture a month, maybe. That's that's about accurate. That's about Let's perfect. Let's go to my action vlog and see what I do. Yeah. I mean, like, I uh, posted a couple stuff, a couple things from Signal. Um, I was hanging out with my family this weekend, so I posted, like, one picture of Matt. And then, like, a, uh, I don't know, a month before, I was hanging out. You just um, need enough to prove that you exist elsewhere. when somebody looks. Exactly. So, like, if my if any of my high school teachers are like, what's up with that kid? They're like, oh, cool, he's not dead. That's nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, or work people. I guess work people would know that I'm not dead because they work with me. But well, maybe they won't. Maybe they just don't pay attention. That's true. They're so focused on Facebook. Yeah. Well, you know, fa- Facebook is pretty pretty crucial crucial to for someone, uh, I don't know productivity and or the lack thereof. Stuff. Everything lack everything I have on Facebook is me liking things, mm-hmm. um, or me um, like running happy birthday on people's walls. Oh yeah. I'm the well, opposite. Apparently I have Spotify set to share listens. Nice. But I have I have the app limited to only sharing to me. Oh. That's so funny. I have Spotify set to share, yet on Facebook I have the permission set low enough. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> like wow, most of my Facebook that. uh posting is advertising for these podcasts. Nice. 
And then no one clicks anything. What I I I've clicked at least a couple times. Yeah, you have. I will oh, I will yeah. post or share whatever you post. That's good. Totally. But it's the other three hundred people I'm supposed to know that that don't. Oh, okay, I just probably finish talking about our Apple Watches. Oh, yeah, Apple? totally. Is that a thing? Yes, it's okay. the big fruit company. So you have the um, forty-two millimeter. I have also the forty-two millimeter. We both have Sport. You have the. Yeah. White band and silver. I have the black band and and space gray, whatever it's called. Nice. Is is the is the sport the space black or is the sport the space gray? I can never remember. I think I think it's space gray because I think that it matches the same aluminum as well. It's a lot actually. It's a lot darker than my space gray iPhone. However, um, the steel one looks way darker in photos. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking too. Let's see. Looks like according to Apple's official thingy. Yes, the sport is space gray, and the uh, the watch, watch, the watch edition collection, watch, yeah. <laughs> the edition free watch, 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 is the uh, that's space black. That's right. Okay. Oh man. So, Brennan, would you would you think you have a large wrist or a medium or a small? Absolutely, a small wrist. I am on the small band, and I'm like two buttons away from the uh, from the smallest way that the that the small band could be so you're on the added. third dot that's right third dot from wow. the i would have to go I'm, i would say i'm i'm large i'm i think i have a medium ish thing I'm, i also have the small band because i figured less weight i am on the second to largest or third from largest see the second is a little looser than i like but the third gets a little too tight and then it starts then if i do anything that's not sitting at my desk it starts to sway a little bit and then mm-hmm. it gets uncomfortable yep only if, if I'm like doing activity, I'll do the third one so it gets better heart rate monitoring because I don't want to flop around too much. Yeah. Has the fluoroelastomer been all right for you? I've, I've heard people say that the black band was lighter or more comfortable or otherwise better than all of the colorful ones. But Yeah, I remember seeing someone break down Apple's weights of every different model and the black band is lightest, I think, by almost 10 grams. Oh, wow. Um, I think this is for me looking at it three months ago. Um, yeah. Yeah, my that... band hasn't really worn down, so I've, I mean, I've had mine for a couple weeks now. Yeah, three or three weeks. I don't. Yeah, I got it. Well, actually, it arrived at my house a week and a half. It arrived at my house like May fifth or sixth, but I didn't get yeah. it until I came home. No, it came in April, like the twenty eighth. I didn't oh get it gosh. until May 9th when I got home, though. Um, so I've had it for a few weeks. The band feels, you know, like it's been worn. The inside of the band is much newer, nicer feeling because I think it's on my wrist, but the outside is. Exposed to the elements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's it's not like grimy. I've rinsed it off a couple times, but it's it feels older, feel like, I don't know, weathered, yeah. slightly corroded, you know, weather. Yeah, like any rubber does, it's exposed. Yeah, but not like you've been like running through a sandstorm and it's all, it, it hasn't been distorted. It, it's not torn up. Yeah, no, I've seen yeah. some people say their bands have started to break down a little bit, but that has not happened to me. Nice. Well, I guess that kind of begs the question, is that is that another, uh, you know, there are some people who say that Apple kind of builds in that obsolescence from the from the beginning. I'm not one of those people who believes that, but there, there are people who say that. Um, it, do you think that based at the rate that you're you're seeing the band wear, does it seem like you you'd need to get a new band next year? Or is it too soon to tell? Or I think it's too soon to tell. I'm not really sure. I think because when you get it out of the box, it's going to never be like that again. And, you know, totally. once you start wearing it, it gets to one condition. I think it's going to stay like this for a long time. Yeah. Um, I'll show at least you guys on video if you can see. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do you see any little wear marks on there? Yeah, totally. So that's, you know, there are two notches there because I have, I switched between two, two different sizes. And so here's the other side as well, if you can see that at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It just shows the rings of two. And so, I mean, it's just wear. I don't think. I mean, I might if I have this for many years, I might need a new band, and I might just buy a new band, a third party one or something. If yeah. I just feel it, yeah, totally. So even a different colored one from Apple. If I'm getting sick of black, mm-hmm. how is how is the um the latching to the actual body of the watch doing? Is that still secure and snug and good? Yeah, it's it's secure. If I'm on the um the looser one, I'll tend to fidget with it a little bit, and because when it's when it's wrapping around your wrist it's got some more tension but you can push down closer to your wrist and then it kind of wiggles a little bit mm-hmm. then it pinches my arm hair and hurts a little of course but whatever yeah. but yeah it works out pretty well it seems yeah. like a great system for putting it in and out of totally. the 
um, the watch itself. Yeah, it feels way better, I'd have to say, than the than the Shine, which is probably because the Shine is like 10% the price of an Apple Watch. Probably. The, <laughs> might have something to do with it. But the, um, you know, the, the sport bands are, like, it, it feels really high quality for what it kind of looks like on the page. And I know everyone and their second cousin has said that. Um, but it it's... I was surprised at it, you know. I was surprised at it definitely. Even even before I put it on my wrist, I was surprised at it. Um, but the closure too seems really uh really well thought out even though it maybe didn't seem like that also in store. Mm-hmm. Um the, the fact that you can kind of tuck the 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 tail end of the band underneath the rest of the watch instead of using like a little uh um uh, uh, what would you call it? You know, some on like your standard Timex that you can get from Target or whatever, they have uh, sometimes like a little washer almost that yeah. you can slide down over the over the band. Like in, in this case, what you do instead is you actually slide the tail underneath the rest of the band, and that's at first it, it seems like it might be kind of frustrating, but I don't know. It's actually made it a lot easier for me in the in the end. So, um, and of course, I've got the I've got the white sport band, so it's the one that's most likely to discolor, um, get weird if it's dropped in mud mm-hmm. hopefully it's not going to be dropped in mud not right, hopefully wood. but you know it's i mean I've, I've taken it out into the rain on a bike ride a couple times mm-hmm. what was it it rained like uh what was it two days ago yep. something like that Constant thursday rain all day yeah that was fun mm-hmm. <laughs> that was that was the day i didn't have the umbrella yeah that was that was awesome um but the uh yeah it was it was fine through that you know yeah i'm, I'm just really excited to see what uh how it works like the the thing for me that's been really awesome is dictation like i've used dictation on my phone but it's way better on the watch i'd have to it say. is it takes up everything. everything i was trying to talk to my apple watch for listening to the nexus special yep. on thursday or friday and it's just sort of picking up words from the podcast and i'm like ah no stop stop yeah one of you should say the magic words to activate the voice assistant and uh, we'll see. Oh, that, well, it's not going to work for me because I'm wearing headphones. What, what, what are the magic words? Hey, Siri. Oh. Did it work for you, Brian? What's three plus two? The answer is five, Wolfram Alpha. Very nice. Hey, Siri, send a message to Brian saying, Hi, Brian, I activated Siri for you. Is it working? No, probably not. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. No. Ahoy, telephone. No, nothing. Oh, well. We gave it a go. I just sent you a a a, a swipey thing on the screen that you can send messages. <laughs> swipey thing. Swipey swipey thing reception standing by. I'm sure Apple loves that their swipey thing is called that. Hey, I just got the swipey thing. <laughs> I'm sending you scribbles and and pokes. Nice. The the fade away effect is really cool. I think. Oh, it's, totally. Yeah, it's I like nice... that too. Do you think Johnny got his hands on that? He must have. I don't know, because if he got his hands on it, it might have been like the whole screen would look like a piece of aluminum, and then when you swipe <laughs> over it, it's like you're cutting into it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And it'd be like liquid metal. So when you cut into it and then you leave it for a little bit, it, it like forms back into just a sheet of aluminum. That's Apple. Yeah. Design is our foremost priority. So Ooh, I'm my heart when we set to build Apple Watch, we created a way for it to be even more personal. That there you go. That's my jo- that's my Johnny Ive. Um, well, eventually we'll just get brain implants by Apple. What? <laughs> Aluminium. <laughs> we'll Pretty replace much. our, our skull go. with aluminum. So let's talk about some per- peripherals. Yeah. What? So what? 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 What are you using right now, Brian? I know you mentioned you've got the Code keyboard, uh, but it sounded like you got a new mouse recently too. I did. Yes, I bought the Code keyboard. Maybe a month and a half ago, I bought the Logitech MX, MX Master um, last weekend. It arrived on Wednesday. Nice. And I see cool. it. It's got a lot of configurations on it, so it's got a. Let's all all to hold up our mice here. I'm gonna hold it up. There Brandon, we go. I hope you're holding your mice up too. Your mouse up too. I am too, but it's not getting us anywhere for some reason. That's Sorry, okay. guys. That's fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, it has you know left and right click. A scroll wheel that can um, ratchet or be freeform. Nice. Uh, a side scrolling wheel that is just free. A forward backward button, and then underneath your, underneath your thumb there is a gesture button kind of thing. And so you can also use the gesture button. If you hold it down and push the mouse left, right, up, or down, and it can do something else. And all of this can be configured to be whatever, even uh, just a keyboard command. Um, so how many buttons in total do you have? 
hold and there's one more there's a button that can deep by default sets it from ratcheting or to freeform for the main score so there's yeah. one two three four five six uh six buttons seven if you count the main scroll wheel as a button as well which it can be okay nice so there's a horizontal and ver- vertical scrolling um and it comes with an app that you can configure anything to be whatever and mm-hmm. which i think is great so i currently have the thumb gesture thing to be mission control so i can quickly click to other windows and see if someone's hiding um and in addition to that it comes with the bluetooth it comes with bluetooth and it comes with a usb wireless adapter it also comes with its own micro usb cable to charge it because it has its own built-in battery don't have to deal with double A's or triple A's anymore. That is A's. nice. And it has a button at the bottom to connect between a first, second, or third choice computer. So it probably has, it spoofs its Bluetooth Mac address, I'd assume, to oh, nice. three different computers. And so you can put it onto one, click your mouse, and it connects to that computer. You put it onto two, and you have the other computer on, you click it, and it'll connect to that one. That is a really nice feature. Yeah, Which totally. I love because I have a desktop and a MacBook mm-hmm. and I go between them sometimes. And so I yeah. can just grab this mouse and go to a friend's house if I'm needing a mouse there. Not that it happens very often, but well, it if, makes you wonder. if need be, I can do it. Makes you wonder when they're going to do that with one of their uh, keyboards because clearly that's needed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is, um, the Code 128 key mechanical keyboard, the Cherry MX Brown version. Nice. Um, made by Wasted keyboards or something like that i don't remember it's just from memory um actually yes it's in the url i have here yeah wasd keyboards yeah so it's like for the 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 controls for like games right you use wasd yeah. to go forward backward left yeah. right nice so it's full mechanical um the brown meaning um how much pressure you need to push before it triggers the key and how far it goes down and how much of a feel you have so there's you know there's a threshold yeah, you feel it giving away, and so it's that whole threshold thing. I got the brown because it was the cheapest one, and a friend had it and said it was just fine. So have, you, have you used any other flavors? Nope. Okay. Brown so works. My uh, keyboard also is brown. It's a Logitech 700 or something. I don't know. It's it's mechanical, and it uses brown, and I really like the brown ones over the uh, reds because it's much quieter. Yeah, okay. that's what I've heard too. And the the brown's supposed to be like easier to yep. uh, activate, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's supposed to. The point is that you're not supposed to have to use as much travel in order yep. to get it. It's so. much less force. That's awesome. It's a heck of a lot more force than my old Apple keyboard, though, with the super yeah, flat key. Of course. Which I'm still getting used to. I'm pretty used to it. But what what is nice is there's like a Mac mode, and it comes with a tool to like take out any key. So I oh, yeah. use the command. Mm-hmm. And option keys Does so it, come it matches with the, the, the those keys that you can replace. Does it come with the branded images or not? No, it doesn't. Okay. They're just um, blank keys that no holes in it for backlit. Well, I guess you could still scribble on your own. Glyph. True, I could even cut a hole in it. Probably that's but, a lot of work. Yeah, but what's interesting is there's the you know the volume changing buttons that all Apple keyboards have. Yeah, so there's. The like the insert button is play pause. The home button is stop, which doesn't work in OS ten. Page up is volume up. Page down is volume down. The pause button or one right above page up is mute. Delete is back and end is forward. So you hold yeah. the function key, which is between the right control and alt button. Yeah. And do any of those to play, pause, whatever. Now what I noticed is play pause works fine everywhere, including Spotify. However, the next and back buttons well, my Apple keyboard did work in Spotify. It does not work on this keyboard. So I don't know what they do. They might bind to a keyboard shortcut or something. Who knows? And That's then there's awesome. also the F11 and F12 keys. Can be used the function key to turn off or change the brightness of the backlight. Nice. Nice. And it runs on micro USB with a cable that comes with it. Like, so. I like how generic it looks. So, like, it's just a rectangle. There's no extra writing on it. It's just plain. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Can you you can design your own too, so that the the different different keycaps can have different colors and all that, and different. Um, you can, oh not my, my particular model, but other keyboards that WASD keyboards makes you can do. Oh yeah, yeah gotcha. Oh, so this is yeah, this isn't the code keyboard. This is just a uh, the one that I'm looking at's different. But oh I wow, look at others because maybe it would have been about the same investment to maybe get a different one or more features. I don't know. Well, you yeah, know, you won't well, you, you won't be able to support Jeff Atwood if you get a different one. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just see, I, I'm I'm finding myself kind of just clicking around in the keyboard designer to see what it what it's like, but um, I'm finding myself changing everything to either tan, gray, or or uh, red keys, which is that is because... hilarious. You can get a a flavor tester. You can get a six key Cherry MX tester, so you can feel how they feel. 
Oh my gosh. How I much does that cost? It's only fifteen dollars. That's actually really sure. reasonable here. I'll put a link right below your link. There you go. Oh it's actually really nice. Yeah. Can you actually hook it up to anything, or is it just the bare switches? No, it's just the bare switches, but still, that's nice. It's only oh one gosh. switch, so you won't get to feel all your fingers touching it. But that that gives you a pretty reasonable idea, especially when these things are $150. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I totally, totally kind of am buying that right only now. Only four people like this page, so I'm going to be the fifth. So, Brandon, if you're actually buying this, please bring it the next time I see you, because that would be super fun to try out. Yeah, totally. I don't know if I made a good decision or not. Anyone? Hey, Brandon, what did your what did your watch do a minute ago? What am I? My, oh, you got a you got a ping. I got a ping that said it's time for me to stand. I am not I going to stand. Both stand right now. That social network is gone. Ping is ping. Brandon, oh, no, no, stand no, no, no. For ping never dies. <laughs> okay, let's let's do this right now. Never, okay, I'm standing. Ryan gets to see me stand. I'm gonna move my camera so he's not staring at like awkward parts. Thanks. And then you just kind of walk in place, do whatever. I get to stare at the light. I see the light. And they yeah. move around. They're just they're halogen. They're IKEA halogen. That I'll must burn your house down. It, LEDs. My man. room between between those lights and my computers, it does make my room sometimes five to ten degrees warmer. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's nice in the winter. Maybe. Or just open a window, let the cool air come straight down to all my computers if it's in the a cool summer night or something. So, Brandon, are you at your computer? I I am. Um, Okay, cool. So, do you have any other accessories with yours? Because I just currently have mine on top of a cardboard box, my little charger cable, and I set it into that every night. Yeah. So i i have um i, I have the official Apple um uh the the Apple Apple Watch sock. Um, it's not actually a sock. It's, okay, it's, good. It's more of a hat. It's a winter hat. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of in the same vein as the. There's an official Apple accessory for it. No, I'm I'm just being facetious. Um, okay. You guys remember the iPod socks, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I basically fashioned a an Apple Watch sock out of a, a winter hat that I got last winter. You know, just one of the standard, you know. Yeah. Knit hats, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The sort of thing you can get at Target for like four fifty. Yeah. Um I when I say fashioned, I mean I folded the hat over <laughs> and set my watch on it. <laughs> so yes, that is that is my current dock, and I think it there there it shall stay for the next couple of uh couple of days at least but cool it's it's working all right but i think i think i might after we're done here um see see about tracking down some legos and making that make yeah happen. that'd be cool so i'm looking at buying a stand eventually mm-hmm. so we have some linked here the the one i really love is the one the nomad dock oh totally the most beautiful looking thing that's a great 69.95 which is a pricey thing that i don't know if i want to spend that much on so. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the trick, right? Because there's so many nice things out there for Apple products, but then, but then the more you think about it, the more you're just like, ah, uh, maybe I should just make it out of Legos. <laughs> Let, let's I be don't honest. Think Legos will cut it for me for that long. That's true. That's fair. But, but Legos are I so easy to replace. Here, so, what? Legos are so easy to replace. You know, if one breaks, you can just get a different one. They're true, so hackable too. Aluminum or uh, seamless plastic. Well, it's you you can, you can paint it to look like aluminum. Yeah, you could pull a Sam Sheffer and, and paint it gold. But then my precious Lego collection is smaller. Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a small price to pay. Eh, seven dollars. It's that's that's cheaper than using Legos. Maybe, yeah, actually. <laughs> Ooh, I got my stand my standing in for this uh hour, so we're we're good for another hour, guys. This is awesome. Very nice. I, I achieved all my goals today for the third day in a row, which is nice. a rare feat, I will say. I think the first three days I, I got it all in a row. I don't think I'm good on exercise today, I have to say. Um, yeah. Nope. I think nope. I can do it on weekends if I'm going out and doing things. Yeah. yeah. It's really not too hard, especially with the speed I walk. If I walk anywhere that's longer than a minute, it counts as exercise. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So I don't know. I, I mean, I went to a mall today, so I should I should be totally fine on um, that, but Alas, no. I guess I was sitting too much at the mall. How many steps do you have today? Uh, let's see. I'm at uh 250 calories. I don't. I guess I don't know how to translate that into steps right now. But if you go to the activity app, you can oh. scroll down. Yeah, I'm at six thousand, six thousand three hundred ninety-two ish, something like that. I'm at four hundred eighty calories because I biked a bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, 50, you did. Fifty-eight sure steps. That's not a lot of steps. What? That's not a lot of steps. No, it's not. 
How does that work? I, is that right? What? Are you alive? Yeah. And this is more of an active day for me. I don't I don't get to walk. I don't walk very much. It's but, bad. But 58, like, when I hit my Fitbit, like, you could do, like, 100 just going up and down the stairs twice. Yeah. That's true. That's true. The Fitbits can be a little bit generous. Yeah. And the, the watch is supposed to be even more generous. But... Well. Well, I had, I got 27 minutes of exercise in. I went, I walked to lunch with a friend. And so we walked from, uh, I don't know, basically, I don't know, this is the distance from St. Clair to Grand Avenue plus another block and a half. Yeah. And there and back. And that counted for like maybe three or 4,000 steps. And the rest had just been me around my house or at the grad party I was at. Oh, I see. I thought you said 56 and just assumed that that was the whole number. Oh, I said 58, 58. Okay. So I'm just no longer Brandon. Okay. That's fine. You're alive. It's okay. No need to worry. <laughs> Yay. 56 steps while I had 27 minutes of exercise. That's why I was very concerned. I ever just step a minute. Yeah. <laughs> They're just large steps. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't be surprised if you see me flying over your head at 300 feet. Yeah. Leaps. Did you all ever use those uh, heart rate monitors? See, when I was in high school, we had something that was, uh, what do they call it? Online gym, uh, which whenever I say online gym, everyone's like, what? Yeah, we didn't like, have that. How do you do gym online? Um, I, I, it was like a pilot program in my school, right? So what they did was they issued like a Garmin watch and a heart rate monitor like one of the chest strap ones Mm -hmm. to every student and you would uh based on like a like a like a baseline test that you do at the beginning of the semester they would track uh you would have a like a personalized uh exercise plan based on it and it was actually pretty pretty well but i did it and um my partner maddie did it and we uh the the uh we we both had the same issue and that was that the chest straps didn't really fit very well so um and of course it's garmin so it's one size fits all and it's elastic and whatever but um but it was really funny because basically we, the the readings we were getting were like zero so we we'd always joke like well i guess i'm dead because i don't have a <laughs> pulse um i haven't had the trouble with the watch but it's the same the same sort of deal with those steps like that too mm-hmm. yeah it's fun it's fun i'm i'm curious how the watch and phone compete with each other for steps oh totally I don't so, know how they do. I mean, well, actually, let's see. My watch says fifty-eight seventy-eight now, even though I haven't stood up. Apparently, I had twenty steps while sitting in my chair. Um, oh, weird. My my phone said sixty sixty one hundred, but now it went down to fifty-eight hundred. Oh gosh, yeah. I don't know what it's doing. What's they, the they have to they have to have some sort of deduplication going on there. I have no idea what it is, but or, it would be very uh, interesting. Yeah, watching overrides, or I think maybe it was caching yesterday or something. Yeah, that's possible, definitely. Because I don't know, if, I don't remember if I've opened the app. Let me see what I got yesterday. I can't really. Yeah, I think that was yesterday's count. Oh, okay. It, although I thought it was in the app earlier today. I don't know. Whatever. Well, my Fitbit says that I'm dead, so I don't know what to oh, tell you. It's good knowing you, Ryan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, it happens. Those... So some other stands I was looking at for my Apple Watch were the, um, I guess this, the Griffin watch stand, mm-hmm. which is not bad. It's twenty nine ninety nine. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's plastic, but it can also kind of hold your phone. Yeah. Um, in more of a general way, just as it's a little ledge up against something else. So that can work. And then there's the Spigen um, S330, which is even cheaper at nineteen ninety nine, which is aluminum. But it's not as seamless as the wire. Just kind of it. The inductive charger sits in a frame, but it just kind of hangs out a hole in the side of the arm. Mm-hmm. Nice. So it looks nice, and it look it looks. I'd say twenty dollars nice. Definitely. And then you could do a Lego one too with a minifigure holding it. But that seventy dollar one just looks so nice. Yeah, but it's seventy dollars. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. But like. You could nearly get a uh, um, a band for one of those. I guess a sport band. You could definitely get a sport band. After tax, you could buy a, a sport band and a half. You could buy an app, iPod Shuffle and a half. Ooh. You could put your watch on an iPod Shuffle to charge. <laughs> <laughs> on a stack of iPod Shuffles. That is, they're they're oh, like man. Legos. <laughs> that would be... ah. Oh. See, I do have, so I have, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I have one of the nanos, the, the nanos that they were converting to watches with the, um, yeah, the square. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. square versions. Yep. I love that thing. I had it for, well, I still have it, but I, I used it constantly for almost four years as, as a watch because mm-hmm. it had um, one of those, uh, 
I don't even remember what you call it. They they used to call it a TikTok, but that was the aluminum one that would like you would like screw it into a case. But mine's just like a clip on watch band. And in retrospect, it's actually pretty darn similar to what we're what we're doing with the Apple Watch right now. Mm-hmm. But it's it's so uh it's it's so different in build quality. And of course, I mean the the nano that would be on that watch is like at least six years old now, so it's it's pretty much it's not unusable. Retina. It doesn't have good battery. It doesn't sync to your phone. It just does music, some photos, and it's totally statically synced. Yeah, and well, and the time uh, is. Let's just say it's not horologically correct. Um, yeah, they, they definitely did not um, consult the horological experts that they did for the watch. Mm-hmm. There, it, it every uh, every day actually it, it becomes about six hours off. Well, that so. is not okay. Really? Yeah. Wow, six yeah. hours is a lot. It's pretty substantial. Yeah. Huh. Uh, like right now, uh, let me see. He's getting more steps yeah, in. That's good. It says it's like two p.m. <laughs> yeah, not maybe not here, but somewhere. Good it point. Two p.m. Two p.m. Central Standard Time. I think. I think mm, it's time for it yeah. to go. Well, it yeah. was yeah. Hours long ago, so it's accurate at some point. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. It's accurate at least twice a day. Sure, it is. Unless it keeps being behind, like I think it, it might. Now, uh, yeah, I think it's not a stuck watch. It's just wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh well, it had a good run. Definitely had a good run. Any which way. Oh my gosh, I did it again. <laughs> he said it again. Gosh darn it! Can can you Ryan? Can you make a filter to catch all my any oh, which I, ways? I can't make a filter, but I could put a uh, marker there and totally emphasize that you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds Every good. Podcast yeah. we do with Brandon. To just be a collection of any which ways. Okay, well, what yeah, we'll do is for every show we do, I'll collect at least one. And then when, <laughs> if we ever stop doing the shows, I'll just make the last show full of them. Yes. Oh, perfect. Oh, my gosh. It, it'll just be a compilation of any which way. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say if we ever stop? Yeah, exactly. If we stop. If. Well, I so mean... most of the 5x5 five five shows, they only stop when they get to episode 100 and then just poof out of existence. <sighs> Is that what's happening with the web ahead? I hope not. I love the web ahead. Have well, you guys ever heard that one? Oh yeah, I've, I've listened to it a few times. That one's uh, know with Zeldman, right? Podcasts. I saw Ian emailed us with some podcast stuff, but then accidentally deleted the email. Oh well, I can help you with that. It deleted, deleted it. I don't know why it's not in my trash. Like I thought I was done with it, but then I remembered. Oh crap! There are podcasts I should maybe listen to. But at the same time, I might only just listen to ATP. That's fine, as long as you listen to something. Yeah, and definitely. And specials that I'm not hosting. So, funny yeah. th- funny thing about Ian's feedback, which we should have addressed, but I totally forgot. Um, hey, Ian, it's feedback time. <laughs> um, so, there's somebody else on the network who typically will send in feedback when, when somebody does a show also on the network, and that yeah. is Andrew Bailey. And so... Most of the time when I get feedback and I, I, I'm CC'd to everybody. So, you know, if, if there's somebody sending feedback to Ian and Ian Decker, um, I'll also see it. And I assume just therefore it's Andrew Bailey sending feedback in. And uh-huh. I read Ian's feedback for this show and I didn't know it was Ian's feedback because I assumed it was Andrew Bailey's. Yeah. And then I get to the line like, um, like where he's talking about, um, like, um, Periscope just came out for, on Android. I think Ryan and I will be broadcasting our reactions to Google I.O. And I'm like, why would Andrew Bailey write it like that? Because we're not <laughs> going to do that. What is he talking about? <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's Ian. <laughs> no, that's awesome. It was it was so cool to see you guys at uh, Periscope it there. I, I'm, I feel like a proud uh, Stratcom student. I watched the, the new first media. minute of the replay, if that counts. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, totally. yeah it totally counts. Cool. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Thanks no, for the uh, feedback, Ian. Hope you listen again. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I have the email again now. Sorry yes. for deleting it. Oh, I, I don't know if I got the email. Did, did you just send it on, or? Um, I it should have already sent it to you, but I'll send it again just in case. It was sent to B at. I'm gonna yeah. their email. It was sent no, to B. That's fine. That's fine. I know. I know that one. You know I'm that just, one. Yeah. It might be uh like being flagged as spam because it wasn't sent from spy dot operative, which should yeah. be marked for spam, but isn't because Google's funny that way. Gotcha. Hey, mm-hmm. I just got it. Okay. I that's think cool. mine was marked for spam too, but I pulled it out. Hey, you know, well speaking of uh follow up, you know, speaking of that, you know, we just mentioned it. Periscope. Periscope is a thing and it is on Android. I have it now on Android. It is. And Dave, you know he, you know, Ian used it on IO Day and I used it I think yesterday to 
give a tour of the garden. Very exciting. So that nice. was kind of cool. Oh, I got a notification that you're doing that, but I wasn't in a time where I could yeah, watch it. That's fine. Yeah. That's the that's... biggest problem with this live video thing. But that's why Periscope does it best, right? Because you can always watch the replay or sort of always watch the replay. You know, I wonder how long of. they're going to keep those replays available. I mean, it's Twitter, so they could, I mean, they could keep it pretty indefinitely. I mean, t- Twitter is kind of... Okay, well, so, like, I can't get my 4,000th tweet ago tweet. You can't? Well, I think the API has, like, 3,500 limit. It's really hard. Oh, it's really yeah, tough right. to get you're, old things. So what is right Periscope going to do? You can't get your 1,000th minute of video. Ha, 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 Yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, I, I bet they're still hanging on to it. I bet they just move it. To, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Cold storage. Spot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But still, it's kind of annoying that they might. They, they, I, I don't think they'd ever. I don't know how Twitter could ever put in a paid component into any of their products. But if the, if there were to do one, Periscope might be that. Like you know, that's true. For you know, twenty dollars a year, you get to store your unlimited video periscopes. But otherwise, you get the last five or something. That's true because video would be like an order of magnitude or multiple orders of yeah. magnitude more. Um, it c- kind of reminds me of what Twitch does. Doesn't Twitch do something like you can store a few videos on Twitch if you're free, but if you're paid, you can do indefinitely stored videos, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I haven't, I haven't followed Twitch very much, but yeah, I, I, haven't I know, either. I know enough to know that they're owned by Amazon, yes. and therefore all of their metrics are now belong to nobody. Uh, metrics. They're Amazon, Amazonified. Ooh. That- I was trying to mix Amazon and amazing, and I don't it, know it how. didn't work. Ama- Am- Amazon, Am- Amazoning. So whenever I type in Amazon, I always do it wrong the first time. I always put a G at the end. Amazon. <laughs> every time. Every every day, every day, yeah. So on the first day, we did the Periscope with I was mm-hmm. with Ian on Android, and um, he was streaming with his um, Nvidia Shield tablet. It's kind of cool. It's oh gosh, cool. it's nice. You know, it's pretty fast. Yeah. Um, and I was he was streaming up to Periscope, and I was streaming down. I was watching the video we were periscoping. And, nice. And so you know we had been going through this horrible, boringly keynote for like an, at least an hour and a half at this point, and then yeah. suddenly yeah. on my phone Periscope crashes, and I had <laughs> I hadn't touched my phone in you know forty five minutes at least. And I, I look over to Ian. Yeah, hey, look, look, it crashed. <laughs> I bet it was a memory leak. And he's like, eh. <laughs> yeah. you know, and he just goes on complaining about how boring it, uh, IO is. So then I, of course, I'm a freak and I decide to investigate the, um, what do you call it? Um, the debug log that pops up. That yeah, can, totally. That you can report to, um, Google slash Periscope people. And so I, I look through the stack trace and it says Java exception out of memory. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yep. I like those tweets that you posted about it. I was oh like, yeah, oh, that totally. That's exactly what it was. Yep, um, it's not right. mm-hmm. that Yeah, was fun. that was what it was. <laughs> so that that that's all I know about Periscope. They did it wrong. <laughs> that's awesome. We oh, should... another note about that. They for some reason, um, they they had multiple updates. You know, the day and the day after they released the app onto the yeah. Play Store, they didn't change the version number at all. So like five updates went through, but they're still there. That's, that's like it's totally... like they were still on one point as far as I remembered. Kind of weird. It's like with Homebrew. Sometimes I'll see updates to like Python three or something. Yet I run through update and brew upgrade all, dash dash all, and Python isn't updated. It's like it's just a supplemental thing for maybe just installing, so it doesn't need to be fully updated. But... So the version on my phone now is Periscope one point zero point one. And for three days, it had been on 1.0, but with multiple updates. Huh. So that's great. Semver. Who needs it? Man, <laughs> who yeah, needs semantic Oh, man. Who was I complaining about Semver to somebody else? Audacity. Oh, they broke yep. They broke Semver again. They added a feature to a bug patch number. Yeah. Unacceptable, man. Yay. Oh, Semver is fun. They need, to, they need to get their Agile in order. Am I right? I, I'm, I just I don't know what the update is if it's not Semver now. I'm a freak. No, I I I get that a hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. So this this project I'm working on um is is a little bit crazy because the team that I'm on is um this is kind of unrelated but sort of related. Um, we're basically we're gonna try to do this agile and we're gonna try to do it um fully unit tested That's and we're tough. Gonna, we're gonna include um 
like uh, acceptance testing in it, so it's going to be capybara ready and yep. stuff. Mm-hmm. But sure enough, um, I am the developer for it. Yeah. It's all me. So mm-hmm. I'm, which is awesome because I'm like, heck yeah, I get to do all this fun testing stuff and then say I built something and tested it. But I have to then go and build it and test it. Yeah. So, so you're going to do the test a lot, first. A lot of work, a lot of time for a few number of features, but you'll feel good about it and you'll get paid to do it. So that's, that's, that's a lot of fun. Definitely. I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it, but it, I'm, I'm also kind of like, is, is this what you want? Or would you like to get it like 30% faster? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I would love to do it either which way and it's going to be fun. Oh, there's no another one. Market Ryan. Oh, right. Um, are you going oh to gosh, um, no. are you going to be doing the test writing first I think it's or which way? Not any which way. But... Oh, it still counts. I'll listen to it in post to make sure. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. In fact, this conversation never happened in post, and he actually did say any which way in post. Because <laughs> you're going to paste in any which way over the any way that I said. Yeah. Oh man. You should just take him and say any which way and just like stack on this any 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 which, which way. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> So are you going to be doing the uh, test writing first, or are you going to actually develop parts of the pr- app first? Oh, you bet. I'm going to do TDD all the way. Okay. Test-driven development is... See, I, could, I don't know if I could ever get into that. Like, I you need so... You need, like, a really concrete, like, idea of what exactly you need. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's nice because this is, in a lot of ways, an API consumer, which mm-hmm. is why I'm... Which is why my like dry run, the one that I'm doing for for myself for fun, mm-hmm. is uh, is also basically just an API consumer. Yeah. Um, among with some other kind of added stuff that I just want to learn how to do uh, a little bit more solidly in Ruby. So, mm-hmm. um, but it's I I think TD can be a lot of fun. So test driven development, um, because it just it just kind of fits with the way that I want to program right now in this current instance so when you Um, go down that tdd route how does that work in terms of you writing code that can run soon do you get to ever run anything soon sort of i would probably do it the the way that i'm currently doing it now with my little kind of tdd tests yeah um, is the when i say test there i mean the times that i've kind of tried out tdd to see how it work Mm -hmm. um it's been mostly in Java, a little bit of Ruby, a little bit of Mocha, just because Mo- Mocha is is a fun little JavaScript testing framework, and I figured I'd mess around with that a little bit because I haven't written tested JavaScript apps in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, basically, my workflow is write a test, just write that one test, yep. and then fix it. Um, okay. So, so write write the code until the test passes. That sounds good. I think that in a and then and then repeat it until I've written all the tests. Yeah. And written the code, you know, kind of alternating between writing test, writing code, writing yep. test, writing code. So that sounds and much better than what I would assume TDD would try to enforce. Write all the tests, yeah. then write all the code. That too. would be a nightmare. So you just do a weird reverse waterfall. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That would be awful. Yeah. Yeah, I I did TDD for one lab, for part of one lab. We had to make a, we um, made our own custom object that we extended for another class. Um, yeah. And so we wrote all, we wrote a bunch of tests. We spent like, 45 minutes writing all these tests for this thing that we knew we need. And then we just wrote it. And it was great because we were like, oh, cool, test pass. Oh, test pass. And then we're like, oh, this failed. Oh, our logic is wrong. Maybe it's going to be wrote tests. So it worked out pretty well. Yeah. Totally. Like that's that's how uh, my last two CSI labs uh, for this last class, which is algorithms and data structures, is the one I just finished. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the last two uh, projects for it was I, I basically did sort of pseudo TDD and it felt awesome. Um, it, it felt really, it feels really good to be like, well, once I know I've passed this test, which covers all of these cases, I can be confident that anything that I do will fit, mm-hmm. w- will work within these parameters. Like that just, that just feels kind of awesome when you, when you can go about it that way. So yeah, TDD definitely. is fun. Is well, my... it'll be good to see how that turns out. Yeah. I will definitely keep you guys posted. Sounds good. All right. Oh, so I did get that memory leaks tweet in there. Excellent. We have to, yep. Sorry. We have to put that in there um let's see so next up um we kind of mentioned this a little bit er- earlier on but um brian how do you get most of your uh most of your news i, I know we we talked earlier about like twitter the, twitter, 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 twitter 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 you're, you're taking this here accusian route are, aren't you yes i am well i mean occasionally i'll see something on reddit or even like facebook if someone posts but 99.9 percent time it's twitter because it's real time. I follow enough people that something gets retweeted or in region or even 
like the original posting on nine to five Mac or Mark Gurman or something. Yeah. And so I pretty much see, especially app related, I'll see anything right away. And if it's even, if it's anything large, I'll for sure see retweets or posts about it. And even like other things, I follow some people who do work in other platforms. And so I see it all the, I see the least about Android, but I see a fair amount about Apple, everything, Apple, a little bit of windows stuff. And I see the least about Android too. Aw, even no. Windows Phone though. Oh no, no, you're right. Windows Phone is that even a thing? Yeah, I don't see very much Windows Phone. Yeah, I'll, there's one guy I follow who does some Windows Phone. Stuff. I kind of want to know that guy because uh, you know Windows development could be really good. Totally. He does Apple stuff too. What is his name? It's Steve. Uh, hold on, let me find this. So for me, I mean, I get my news from a variety of places i i'm half feeds and half twitter yeah i i guess i do have feeds half twitter so twitter for me is really like a recommendation engine Mm -hmm. which is why i follow so many people yeah um because i just want to get all of the collective goodness greatness yeah yeah everything that people are kind of pulling in Mm -hmm. and uh, i like to read what those 1463 people i follow are also reading yeah because most of what they do is, is pretty cool, which is why I'm following them. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some stuff that I just want to get all the time. Um, or basically, if I if I have a couple of seconds in between, like uh, in between like meetings, or if I'm right. if I'm on a bus or something, I'll want to just go to sites like Ars Technica, sites like Nine to Five Mac, or um, you know, iMore in some cases, uh, um, and then and then some smaller sites too, like uh, um, there are a couple of local Minneapolis blogs that i kind of like from a from an urban planning perspective because the political scientist in me sometimes comes out still every once in a while um and for those i use unread which is a, a fabulous rss reader by supertop uh, which is a duo out of ireland and canada i think um, who took it over from another ios developer and they made it they made it really uh I, I think they made it a universal app too for for android or not for android for iphone and ipad um so I've I've been really enjoying that for for like I guess my standard reading. It's kind of weird to call it standard though, right? Because it's not really standard. It's like um, the reading that I do when I understand that I have time to set set aside just for reading things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it's when I whenever I'm trying to just like consume new content, that's basically that's basically Twitter. Right. But every everything that I that's that I can consider like a standard content source basically goes into unread for me. Mm-hmm. So I, I have to say I take the Marco route. Yeah. So when I used to do uh, at the Nexus regularly, that was mm-hmm. the gadget show for those listening, Andrew Bailey. Um, when I used to do that, I was pretty much all uh, feed reader because and I was looking for stories for the show, basically, and of course reading the news at the same time. Yeah. And um, you know, Twitter has replaced a lot of that for me. But the problem with Twitter, I feel like now, is that I'm always getting too much like. Um, site news like like the verge takes over my feed i don't really care oh, totally. what um like site people are writing i want to know what people are thinking and that's kind Absolutely. of what i'm using twitter more for now these days uh like when somebody writes about you know something they did with some code or they're they they did a talk somewhere and they share the link with that that's more useful to me than oh the verge released a new video of the g4 review uh, no totally yeah absolutely and so Absolutely. then I also have Reddit um, also, and Reddit, what have I done with these links? I've totally destroyed them. Um, Reddit for me takes, not really for news, it takes the place of like commentary. I, I never really yeah, go to Reddit I, for, I Reddit like that too. yeah, I never go to Reddit for like finding news. I go to Reddit to see the news I already know about, but to read what people have written about it in the comments. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. I, I don't I don't usually do reddit very much i've i've I've, i have looked at it like when i see somebody link to a reddit post on twitter but i i don't i don't really i i don't read it on my own or of my own accord i i that kind of is born of a don't read the comments sort of thing for me Mm -hmm. um but i i've I don't know. I've I've heard interesting things about Reddit. And I mean, well, of course, Reddit's owned by by Conde, which is which is cool. Yeah, it's um, also dangerous. Oh, totally, yeah. totally. I mean, the the journalism kid in me is like corporations. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, Reddit is really you know, there's a lot of like don't read the comment syndrome, especially in in the Apple media circles. You know, with the Marco and the the John Gruber and you know those oh, guys. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. but for the most part, Reddit on most 
well, tech subs anyway, they're pretty well behaved. That's yeah. Cool. Well, aside from the jailbreak subreddit, which is just a mess. <laughs> well, like I said, most tech subreddits. Understood. Yeah. Understood. I, I guess I could see that. Well, jail, jailbreak is. Uh, well, I mean, they were the ones with red snow, yellow snow. Uh, I hate snow. I hate snow as a person. That's yeah. Uh, what's his name? I don't remember. Uh, uh, Stephen DeFranco. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in Canada. Um, All the week speak, I guess. Yeah. Invasion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, the tech person who I was talking about a few minutes ago is is Steve Trufton Smith or oh, at yeah. S Trufton Smith. I follow him. He does some good stuff. Yeah, I follow him too. I, I think you rec- you you gave him a shout yeah, out. One might say. Yeah, last last episode or last last episode slash last fringe um, fringe. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I follow him now. He is actually he is on my my list of people to. He's on the short list. The the list that is. Yeah. The the readable lists instead of the the fire hose, I guess. <laughs> I need to get more into that listing. Oh, that would save my life. No, li- lists are great. Lists are great. I mean, with with TweetJack, they were better. Because you could have like a separate timeline almost. Mm-hmm. You can kind of replicate that with now TweetDeck, but I mean, there's nothing like like TweetDeck anymore, yeah. which is sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, TweetDeck, those were the days when it was uh, an Adobe Air app and all that. Hey, man, that was going to be the future for about a whole week, and then <laughs> and then it wasn't. Uh, Adobe Air, so 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 promising and. So not promising at the same time. Cause flash. Yeah. Well, see, air, air feels to me like it's it's the it's the former uh, electron or, or like a node web kit. Kinda, yeah, definitely. Like, like it it feels just as responsive to use a node web kit app as it did an air app back in the day to me. Well, I think and, it's a little bit more responsive now for oh, uh, totally. node web kit. But yeah, it is the same kind of packaged pseudo web app for desktops. Yeah, yeah. And I've I've always I've always loved that paradigm. I thought that that, that so much cool stuff could be done there. Yeah, but it's it feels like it feels like a lot of limitations are still there. I mean, I love Adam, of course. Adam's my favorite text editor. Mm-hmm. Um, I I've um I'm I'm gonna I'm working on a post right now where I write about all of the different versions of Vim or or all of the different VI implementations I'm using. Vim. Um, because I have Vim, NeoVim, VimR, um. Space Max, which is basically uh, Emacs with the Vim uh, evil mode activated. So Emacs with Vim key bindings and among other nice little Vim things. So you mean logical? Yes, yeah. definitely logical. Exactly. I don't know how to use Emacs because I don't. Any, I don't know any of the keywords. Because they're things. crazy. There, there are some things that like stick with Space Max that just drive me absolutely batty. That are still in Emacs mode, and I just, ugh, I can't even. The one thing you need to know about Emacs is how to quit. Yes. CX, CX, CC or something like that, or CC, CX. It's like control and then CX, I think, or it, it, maybe it is CCX. Yeah, I don't. You just you just do enough key swipes and it, you'll get out. Just mash the keyboard enough times and eventually you'll cause a kernel panic. Exactly. And then you'll, you just <laughs> you'll free. terminal. Yeah. Or open a new terminal and kill all Emacs. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. I've I've done that before. Yeah, it's it's definitely. I had a professor who uh, office next to uh, RMS, and uh, at one point, not not currently, of course, because RMS is not at the U of M. Good, um, but uh, and and he was like, "Yep, he definitely liked his office and was working on Emacs a lot." Um, <laughs> so uh, it, it's kind of funny because he, he this professor also used Emacs, and I was like, "What what are you doing, buddy?" And he was like, "Oh no, I used to work next to RMS." So. Just because you work next to him doesn't mean you have to do what he does. I know, right? But no, this professor was a very cool professor. Yeah. Um, even though he uses a text editor that it's is crazy. not my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I guess kind of alongside text editors there, um, we have our favorite package managers. Or in Ryan's case. Not favorite? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All of here, the package I should add another one to your list here because uh, there's one I'm using frequently right now. Yeah, which one? Um, Composer for the PHP. Oh, nice. Well, see, it, what's there's one that I just thought of right now that maybe you should that I would be interested in in hearing your opinion on, and that is Cargo, which if, if I recall oh, yes. correctly is the Rust package manager. It is the Rust package manager. Huh. 
So there's a lot of package managers, if you haven't heard. And before we even address cargo, I just want to say that what a weird change from like languages and things before all of this new internet stuff. Yeah. I mean, look at how Java deals with packages. You, 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 it's the worst. <laughs> or, or maybe it's the best. Yeah. Um, what you do is you specify a class path and then you specify, you know, using a separator, all the places the compiler is supposed to go and look for the packages you want to use in your compilation. Yep. And instead of using a dot file of some type, you know, like dot Java file, that would be kind of, or dot class path file. Although incidentally, that's exactly what uh, Eclipse does. Uh, totally. Instead of doing that, you just specify on the command line where you want it to go look and it goes and looks for it. That's kind of cool, right? It's super cool. It it just totally is incompatible with the all modern of the, world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what a weird thing. They didn't have reliable internet then, or they didn't think they had a central repository for all the code everywhere. And so they had to make it differently. What a, what an interesting design choice for something we can see back then. You know, that was made in what, 95 realistically? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then if we look even further back, how do, um, how do, how do C projects and C++ projects get their packages? Well, you just literally go down, you download source code and then compile that even, or you download O files and you, you link in the O files. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. what, what a strange progression we have changed here. And now just every language and every system and even subsystems have package managers inside of package <laughs> managers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if I might, if I might Bru take us on a little Bru bit of a detour here, so. please do. Um, the reason why I exclaimed so loudly when you mentioned class paths is because I'm fighting a particularly nasty bug in an Atom package. Mm -hmm. um, the the Java linter for Ad for Atom basically does not take into account the class path at all. Of course not. And as as a result, I've I've been trying to to squash that, and because because you're kind of grafting those things together and they, they don't really work super well together no um they're, they're not they're, they're not compatible design choices you know it feels um, really brittle yeah totally yeah but but it also but it also makes sense when you put it in context right um, however you know well I'm, the world's really context happy. has moved on yeah i'm really i'm really happy where with adam's going and where adam is yep um and as a as a result i'm kind of banging my head against that particular wall right now mm -hmm. but it's it's definitely really cool to to see that for for what it is, definitely. I really I've used Adam a little bit. I feel like um I use I use TextMate when I'm just doing a small thing. Yeah. Um, this is have great support for like whatever language. Um however when I'm doing web stuff, I always use WebStorm and when I'm doing my Python stuff I use PyCharm. So they're both JetBrains IDEs. So I haven't used or even like I haven't I've used Vim when I was doing system admin stuff in the CSAT Labs at Morris. Um but I never have really used all these text editors that everyone seems to use. I haven't even really used Sublime, and so I feel like I just go the IDE route straight there, which yeah. is probably not the best way to do it. But no, I mean it makes a lot of sense. And what I've always seen editors is doing is like allowing you to build your own IDE, like yeah. around yeah. whatever whatever you do. Like, mm -hmm. and that's why I like Adam because I've got all my linters in Adam. Um, I've built custom extensions that let me do weird like uh, text expander like things. So. Uh, basically, if you hit a certain keystroke for me um, in Atom, it'll wrap everything that's selected in a, a precode, so like a like a um, like a code indent block, um, kind of like you would with GitHub flavored Markdown. If you just do the the triple hash or the triple um, yeah. hash mark, right? Yeah, um, that it, it's it's very very similar in function, but. I was doing a lot of documentation work at work a while back, and I just needed to find a way to do that really quickly. And it was really easy for me to just script in a quick key binding that ran a JavaScript function that just mm -hmm. did that for me. And Definitely. that's that's one of the things that I love about Atom is that you can make it your own like that. And for me, like JavaScript is basically the best. I, I can think in JavaScript. Yeah, yeah me too. So, but what about if you're using an IDE that does it, and then you make a gulp or grunt task that uh, does it as well? Not everything's web. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it's it's the same thing too, because like when I when I tried to to get into Space Max, right? Space Max is the Emacs version that basically implements VI over Emacs. Um, it's it's all Lisp. It's all oh, Lisp the all the way down. And I love it because the spirit of JavaScript is definitely still there. Yes. But I hate it because I never learned Lisp. 
<laughs> so I, I look at it and I'm like, these are an awful lot of parentheses and it looks vaguely kind of like Objective C in the way that messages are passed. Kind of. But it's totally different. Yeah, it's it looks like gibberish in a lot of ways when I actually try to do any real development in it mm-hmm. other than like basically substituting a different theme name in or yeah. or activating a configuration layer. Like I can do that stuff, but that's about it. All of my scheme looks exactly like the rest of all my code. Like I can write scheme just like I write JavaScript. There's no difference. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never worked with that at all. Oh, it's wonderful. You'll love it. Yeah, I I really one of my goals, one of my like arbitrary goals for the summer is to learn Lisp more legitimately, uh, some sort of Lisp implementation. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to decide between Scheme and and Common Lisp. Uh, There's a book. I don't yeah. know. I think they're you know whatever's fine. I mean the MIT one, which is probably Scheme. You know it's fine. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Once you learn one, the other one's just syntactic differences, basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good to know. I think I'll probably keep on keeping on with common lisp then because yeah. I have a book that I really like, uh, like learn common lisp in fixed num days or something like mm-hmm. that. I'll see if I can find it for yeah. the for the notes. But any which way. Um, oh, then no, no, market, market. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so cargo, it's, uh, cargo man, cargo. Yeah. So why is it called cargo when the website's called crates? Isn't that weird? I don't know. <laughs> Um, Just when, you, when you let package manager people who build package managers run things, eh? <laughs> yeah, and everybody uses these new domain names for their um for their package managers dot io. Oh yeah, yeah. You know they should well, have made a like a dot man so they could do like dot manager like bower dot man. You know, does someone is is dot js a thing? Mm, it will be. I yeah. think Google owns it. Of course they do. So that'll be closed. Because then. That's gonna explode as soon as anyone can buy it. Buy I don't it. Know. Oh my gosh, shouldn't shouldn't exist. So Cargo is cool, and the one thing I have to mention that it's unique for is that it doesn't use JSON or some weird, like, plain text thing. It yeah. uses Tomal. Oh, my gosh. And I don't really know too much Tomal. I mean, it's it's kind of like an any file, as far as I can tell from the syntax that I've used. Yeah. And, you know, like, innies have, like, headers for sections, yep. and then that's about it. Everything under the section is just a data pair. It's very simple and very nice. That's all that there is to it. Nice. Yeah, but There's... otherwise, Cargo is just, you know, regular package manager. You specify the things and you download them. Sounds like that does what you need. Yeah. They're all kind of the same at this point. Yeah. If we're yeah. going on the list, then we kind of talked about Atom, but uh, then NPM is your node package manager. Save to a JSON file. Works pretty well. I, I like it. Love JSON. It's yeah. the one true format. It is now. Uh, maybe it, it totally won't always is. be. Uh, no, yeah. For 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 the next five minutes, it will be. <laughs> for the next five minutes. Well, XML still is. I, no. I use. Well, no, no. I'm just saying. Like I've been using some Microsoft Server stuff for SQL. They did it wrong. They Let's... use XML. Like there's archaic stuff, and Microsoft stuff is going to use SQL. Oh, like XML was a mistake in every direction. Everybody should have known that, and I knew that. But I don't know why everybody else didn't agree. Let's ask Slackbot what Slackbot thinks. <laughs> yeah, why don't we ask Slackbot? Yeah. I've, yeah. Yeah. So I just screen capped a thing that describes Slackbot's feelings on market languages. Okay. And it's coming at you. Wonderful. So then we also have Homebrew, which is for OS X. And there's actually like a Linux brew that exists too. I don't know how supported it is. That just is a Git based package manager. Mm hmm. That's really interesting to me. I think that they've done a really good job of of kind of taking over what what Macports used to be. Um, yeah. Because I used Macports back in the day, and Macports was fine. But I think Homebrew is like I think Homebrew is so seamless. Back. I've um I've thought about using Macports or Fink, but I never have gotten around to it. Yeah. And I just have gotten a Homebrew, and it's done everything I needed, and it works really well. And then there's your Yum or now DNF for Fedora based. Yeah. Jason uh, based die. systems. I've used I've used a bit of yum. I don't do anything special with it. It's I basically just get confused between using npm and yum for if using uh remove or uninstall. Oh yeah. But I can never remember. I just take a guess and it, sometimes it works. Yeah. I I have to say I have a I have an extension for uh for Z, for Zcell to tell me which platform I'm on and what environment I'm in. Um so it it can tell whether I'm in well, first it tells me what Git project I'm in, of course. So that that usually helps me with with Yum versus like NPM. Yeah. But um, 
but my biggest thing is like yum versus brew versus apt um those those mess me up because i switch between them about a third of the time each so yeah. my, my, the desktop computer i got running here is is actually on um it's booted into um uh, a heavily customized uh debian environment right now okay um and then at, at work i also use red hat so yum and then uh of course i'm a mac guy everywhere else so yeah yeah <laughs> so all of those are around hanging out have you used brewcast Yes. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I just use it to install, um, to install Vimar. That's what I, I used it to install. Because I, I like the idea of it, but uh, auto updaters don't always work due to, problem, yeah. and that you can't upgrade it in brew, which yeah. bugs me. And so I, I kind of removed everything that I had installed that way. Absolutely. It's great for initial, like super quick try it out, but you can't even delete the apps via it. It's simply oh like gosh. install and run away. Eek. Yeah. How That's... I've seen it. Maybe it's changed or maybe I'm forgetting something, but No, I think you're right. Because it just it just does an alias to your app to your local in your home folder yeah. application folder to somewhere in local or to user user local seller cask or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Person... Sorry, you go. No, I I, th- I feel like that's that's one of the tricks about like Mac ports too is that I I feel like Mac ports was dealing with in binaries for some of the time. Um, I could be wrong about that, or maybe maybe there was maybe there's something else that I'm not seeing there. But um, and and just the the fact that it's all links like that is kind of not it's not my favorite thing. Because uh, Homebrew doesn't compile anything, does it? I think Homebrew does compile. It, it generally compiles from source. Okay. But but cask is the one that's that's get, getting you that's all the binaries. Binary, yeah, that's how I understand it. But. Yeah, and then for other package managers, there's Bower, front end one that Bauer. Ryan doesn't like. I don't get um, it. I'm kind of neutral. It's it does some weird things. I wish it installed its. So like it, for me, it's another folder that just or it's another thing that just makes a random folder that's sort of hidden but totally in my Git repo for no reason. Well, you're supposed to get ignore your power. I department. know, but it's there. Or if you, it's another thing you have to get ignore, which is the 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 issue. I I can see that. And like, uh, I don't modules. I don't know. Power. Like it, using it forces you to do things. Like if you wanted to use Foundation through Bower, you have to use the SAS version almost because what are you going to do? Include random things from files that aren't always there. I don't know. Yep. I don't like it. It's- it's a huge pain to use it with foundation. I would agree. You basically have to use the, the, the SAS comp yeah. compile friendly version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How so? I, I would agree. Oh, with just that. cause there are so many CSS files. Well, so for example, let's say you, you use SAS foundation or foundation through Bower. You, you know, you do Bower. I just called that to my project yesterday. Yeah. So you get Bower. It installs the foundation thing under Bower components or whatever it's called these days. It also does a couple different jQuery things and jQuery plugins. Yeah. So it installs all of the foundation stuff under some folder in Bower, the, the Bower folder. And so now it's yeah. there. And so now how do you include those files in your code? Well, so what do you literally do like dot dot slash? Bower components slash foundation slash blah blah blah. Well, that would suck. I've seen some people do that in prod. Well, that's wrong. Some... That is not yeah. acceptable because those files aren't supposed to go up to prod. Absolutely, absolutely not. But I, I, I just seen don't it like it. Yeah, there was that one makes I saw it. Today. You, have to, you have to use it with a task manager, or grunt or gulp that will compile it down and store it somewhere. Uh, minify it, merge it into one file, and that's that's what I'm working on right now in yeah. my mm-hmm. website because I I'm just using which leads me to Yeoman. Um, the Yeoman Express generator. So it just does a an Express template with maybe a little bit of MongoDB stuff, but not really. So I have to do a lot more manually than I'd kind of like to, but I also am kind of happy about that because it gets me to work with lower level things a little more in terms of web stuff. But um, I'm trying to write and go through some tutorials for gulp tasks to um, wire in dependencies from Bower and then also do a dist folder, which will take everything, smush it into one, one CSS file, one JavaScript file for a vendor and for uh, my own app. And then it serves two files for CSS and JavaScript. And so that keeps it a lot lighter, minifies it in a uniform way. But then, you know, when you're in development, you still link to the Bower component stuff. Yeah, but, that's smart. That's but smart. writing it all my own is going to take a lot of time to do. I'm not even close to being done. Yeah. I keep getting distracted and then I only work on weekends and it's like 
one afternoon a weekend, so mm-hmm. it's going to take a while. Yeah. That's fine. That's not a problem. But you'll get there. Exactly. And it'll be it'll be really interesting to see what you do, definitely. But, but the thing is, I'm not going to start working on my website until I have that done, because then I know it won't be done, and then I'm going to have... And then I want to deploy it, and I won't exactly. have it done yet, and then I'll just never do it, and then it's not going to work out well. Right. All right. So I think that just about ties it up for uh, for uh, package managers here. I think package, so. Package managers and markup languages and, um, I don't know, Lisp. Everything. We're, def- we're definitely done talking about Lisp. That's for sure. Well, I don't know. Those parentheses might not agree. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Is it, I don't think these are valid Lisp, though. I think I might have to remove one space. Well, no, because you can do whatever you want in the inside. Because because the X is totally um, an infix operator, right? Oh yes, you're right. It it's uh it it is an infix operator, right? Um, and the dot, of course, is um a r- left associative operator. <laughs> yep, that's what it, it would seem. So, wouldn't it? Yeah. What these operators do, I have no idea. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, WWDC predictions. Yes, um, they exist. Mark Gurman had a couple of really interesting posts come out a, a couple of days ago. I, maybe it was it was last weekend. Last weekend, essentially, yeah, uh, yeah. These were these were some of the first things I put in the show notes. Um, that sounds like they're going to try to do a uh, kind of a snow leopard ish release. So that is to say, not add the 150 features, but add uh, tr- try to bring up the quality of of the app or, or uh, of the of the OSs, mm-hmm. which is to say, to to kind of focus on making sure that things aren't breaking, um, which would be cool. And we already kind of saw that with the way that they removed um, uh, uh, where they replaced. Uh, uh, discovery d by uh by mdns responder which is the old uh networking stack or we believe it represents a move towards the old networking stack it's probably um, got some modifications because discovery d was there to do airdrop and so they probably just splice that in mds mdns responder but yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little bit sad about that because i feel like i liked discovery d better i don't know i don't know why like how could i have how could that possibly be a thing because it made connecting to wi-fi pretty darn horrible um, in in general the name terms, is catchy. The name is catchy. Yeah, I think I think I like that. I I prefer I prefer. Well, I'm a Stratcom student. I like marketing generally, so I'm, uh, I'm, I prefer I prefer the Discovery D brand. I think it's more. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely more brand ready. I but, agree. Because there's yeah. so much branding for our internal fo- uh, systems services. It, well, you know if. It's it's one more way that Apple can be the most consistent company in the universe, and therefore the most uh, the most interesting company in the universe for a marketing person. Yeah, who also does development to work for. Man, that's so good. No, totally. As as is, hey, all you all you uh, Apple recruiters out there, hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> all, all, all all you Apple recruiters that are listening to this, yeah, definitely. I don't know if I they would. like people who know that they listen to podcasts. I don't know if they like podcast people. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, some some of them some of them listen to ATP, right? So there's a chance. You're right. That one guy. The one guy who said that the watch <laughs> will exist. Our podcast is linked on ATP. Someday. Well, we'll Someday. see about that. We'll see. I don't know. I, I'm, I don't I'm gonna have, have any to friends. turn. Uh, I'm gonna have to turn hypercaching on. So I'm gonna get a lot <laughs> of hits here. Yeah, you're gonna get fireballed. <laughs> My VPS can handle it. Yeah, you bet. So let's talk about some of these um, things. Yeah, I they the German piece, the first one mentions something called rootless, which I totally do not understand. Why do we whatsoever. want it? Why do we want it? Okay, so what rootless appears to be is what they're calling a large kernel level feature to prevent the users from of the computer from having access to files on the system that are important to the actual operating system. Yeah. Now, Sounds why like a would we want that? Immediately, if I want pseudo access. Exactly. Like. Yeah. People use their Macs for development, and most of the time, you need pretty deep access on your computer. Well, I think you know you'll have a developer mode or something. Windows 10 has something kind of comparable to it in terms of developer mode. I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it goes to this extreme, but I mean, I think for your common user, you don't need root. I mean, no, you, you might don't. Need administrator access to install, but that you know, it might. I don't. I hope they're not pushing more towards only Mac App Store. But but is there no, a lot totally. of malware on the system on either iOS or OS X that this really needs to be a thing? Uh, I, I would have to say much, but I think OS X has its fair. There's a lot of adware stuff I see that installs yeah. extensions into other applications 
So you download something and all of a sudden it's in Firefox and Chrome and Safari. And I've had friends come to this and I have to install Adware Medic to remove it all. I don't know. I like, I feel like those things that shouldn't be something that totally just because you, you're in fear of these things doesn't mean you should take away the freedom altogether. I, I, I would, I would have to echo what Brian's saying though, and that I, I've spent probably about maybe five hours over the course of two years. Um, I know five whole hours over the course of two years in technical support where I, um, where I was going through manually to delete Mac Keeper or, um, there's another it's, one that it's I don't It's gotten remember. a lot more it's, popular over the last several years. Yeah. It's definitely gotten a lot more popular. I've, I've probably dealt with maybe 10 or 15 people who had to do it such that I started writing down all of the, pla- like I have a document of all the places that I look for it. Mm-hmm. Um, if I, if I ever run into it, even though I'm, I'm not really, uh, in that game any longer like i don't have any friends with max and i use windows so like i'm used to it already no no absolutely absolutely now when it comes but, to windows virus i'll be like uh wipe I... wipe 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 yeah. it's it's time for you to reinstall wipe or it. think about getting a new computer wipe it yeah. <laughs> wipe it with fire oh got a virus better get a new computer yeah that's pretty much what i tell everyone no, absolutely. Oh, and it's not, it, and it's totally not as if I just put the virus on there or anything either. <laughs> hmm. So this, I don't think this is mentioned in the German piece, so definitely not the first one, but there is talk slash confirmation from Jeff Williams, uh, who's a, a, a VP at Apple. Um, or, or no, he's the chief, he's the COO, isn't he? The chief operating officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that there's going to be a native watch kit SDK or a native watch. Yep. SDK. That's what he said at Recode. So Ooh. we're gonna yeah, have to go. But with I them. mean, they also said that the that Vox Media was gonna buy Recode at Code. So so it's true. It's true. It's all true. Everything everything that they say there is true. And just because it's true doesn't mean it's not unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. for a different show. That is for a different show. <laughs> but uh, any which way, a native SDK is gonna be. Oh crap! I did it again. You did Sorry. it again. <laughs> I think an NF SDK is going to be really nice for apps. I think it'll allow it to be a lot faster for loading, so you're not streaming everything over. So what will that do to the battery performance? Because, like, so streaming the data stuff over, that took a lot of battery. But on the other hand, doing all that stuff on the device... ...and everything might, too. I think, regardless, as Watch OS evolves, it's going to get worse and worse battery performance, or power performance. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm-hmm. So in that token, Which do you think... I'm okay with. I, I mean, I've had my watch on since... 11 and it's at 74 percent oh that's yeah. that's fine i've had my watch on since uh 8 a.m this morning and it's at uh let's see 53 percent. so i'm okay with that yeah, too that's about my average mine mine's really never below 45 percent by the time i go to bed i haven't had my watch on since april <laughs> <sighs> mm-hmm. so on that on that note do you think the next apple watch if there is another one do you think that will be when when not if well, sure. So do you think that'll have more, more, more battery potential, or do you think they're just going to focus on getting it to be fast? The S2, the, the mythical, inevitable next chip that they use to run the Apple Watch is yeah. going to have to be more power efficient, and it's going to have to be smaller. Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine any other... Any they're, other they're not going to make the case different. The only thing that's going to come is from improved battery technology, which doesn't really happen. Right. So maybe tweaking the wattage a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I um, bet the the S two is going to be way more efficient, uh, power efficient. It, it, that's and, the only yeah, thing. Yeah, the, the chip architecture needs to be much more efficient. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually add a, a like a co processor that sits and idles while the display is off or something that uses oh, yeah. like mm-hmm. super low power. Mm-hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Any oh, other major things too, in the uh, predictions and things? Uh I mean. Everything else is kind of pretty, pretty guessable, you know. Force touch on the iPhone six, or you know, the six S. Yeah, or we probably would ram on the six S. We wouldn't hear about that now, would we? Uh, oh, they'll, they'll announce it in September. Okay, so yeah. I guess I guess that makes another question come up: Is there hardware going to be shown? Like, well, if if any, what would be shown? Well, Intel is not ready. No, not um, not for their stuff. No, 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 Sky, like for you. Yeah, the only thing I could see is. A updated MacBook Air or discontinuation of MacBook Air? I don't know because they just updated those chips internal, uh, those internal chips the to what the Broadwell chips? Yeah, yeah. And, but and I think the MacBook Air still sells fine. I don't really see any new hardware, any updates really, unless they touch iMac. But I don't really see it. Maybe Mac Pro. We'll see. 
Oh my gosh, the Mac Pro, yeah. Well, did, last year was the year. Last year at WWDC, they they kind of unveiled it, didn't they? They. Uh, no, it was released in December of 2013. It was yeah, they, 2013. Oh yeah, you're right. It was 2013 that they that they teased it. You're right. I don't I don't know if there is a new Xeon chip for them. I don't. I'm not. I, I don't know. If I don't there think is. It might just, I don't think there is. I what I would imagine is a, a price reduction speed bump. Uh, they need. They have the SSDs and the Mac Pros are two and a half times slower than the new 15 inch wow. Mac Pro. Okay then. I guess that so, would make a lot of sense. Faster, newer PCI based flash needs to be upgraded. Um, totally. Yeah. Probably. Price reductions, tweaking configurations, I would imagine. Absolutely. Maybe USB Type C, if they're pushing that. Yeah, do, do you think that will uh, be pushed if they did make another one? Do you think that would be a big thing? Yeah. Um, maybe, but at the same, I don't know. It, there, not, there aren't many accessories that use it yet. However, they have a MacBook that only has one, so you yeah. think they might push it. Well, know. so if they did add it, would they sa- have to sacrifice a regular USB port for it? I would say probably. I would not, but yeah, I would say probably, yeah. but it would be kind of unfortunate for all the people who expected their Mac Pros to have, you know, how many ever they have now, and then going forward, they suddenly don't. Yeah, I don't know. See, I, I'm i a little bit, I, I fall on the cynical side of things with this one, because uh, my first ever MacBook that I got, a late 08 MacBook Pro, or scratch that, a late 08 regular old MacBook, um, but it was the aluminum unibody one, right? Mm-hmm. The the one of the that. only... One of the only aluminum unibody ones. Um, I, I used to be pretty into um, to video when I was when I bought this this Mac. Um, I made some videos for school. I kind of did some kind of video production post production stuff for like band concerts and mm-hmm. things, yep. um, concert band stuff. Um, and I was just absolutely crushed when these MacBook MacBooks didn't have FireWire. Now I think there was a pro that was way out of my price range that did have firewire but that was not that was just like so far out of the question I was like yeah yeah I was just like I need to just get the 13 I need to get it in these specs and this is just what I what I need to do so sure enough I uh I I had to go for it and I lost out on firewire I got mini display port but it was just USB and mini display port no firewire um so I'm I'm you know another 8 years later or whatever I'm still I'm still kind of sore sore about that um and i i think that apple will will move forward um gleefully into the future even though they maybe will eventually um have to take a couple steps back when everyone cries about mm-hmm. losing their usb ports definitely i was a little bummed when i got the when they discontinued firewire because i was going to get a firewire 800 external hard drive so i could be faster than usb2 oh totally um, but that didn't happen so i had a usb2 hard drive Eventually, I bought a new hard drive enclosure that did USB 2 and FireWire 8 and 400. Yeah. And because I knew I was going to buy a new MacBook, so I was like, I'll get one with FireWire on it. Or, yeah. Then when it came out, it was Thunderbolt, so I bought a Thunderbolt FireWire adapter and used FireWire. And then I'm like, well, the USB 3 is out and that's way faster. So I just kind of skipped over FireWire, yet I have these adapters that I don't really use. But yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, but they'll they'll do what they'll do because they're Apple. And uh, going back to what I what I possibly alluded to, if 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 I didn't allude to this earlier in the episode, I alluded to it in the fringe. Um, yes, it looks like I did allude to it in the fringe. Um, so you'll just have to listen to the fringe in order to find out about the this. whole but fringe, the whole fringe, oh. all of it. It was pretty close to the end. Um, but what what the heck? We'll duplicate it into the show notes for this right here. Um, th- this seems like a good thing to tie things up on to you. Sounds good. Marco Arment, of course, of Instapaper, Tumblr fame, uh, and ATP fame, posted about um, the the kind of the personalities of Google and Apple. And the, I just like, I love this. I've been going back to it in the, like, whatever, two days since it's been posted because it's just so, it, it so well encapsulates um, how these two companies work. And he, and he says that Apple uh, is, quote, always arrogant, controlling, and inflexible, and sometimes stingy. Uh, while well, Google is always creepy, entitled, and overreaching, and sometimes oblivious, uh, and like that's that's it. That's that's the thing right there. Like when Apple has the chance to do something that makes things better for one of their criteria, they will take that action, and people will be sad about it for a little while. But eventually, they'll get to a point where everyone can see that either they're right, and you can't tell, but I'm doing air quotes with that. They're 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 right um, because their combination of things gets gets eventually better um but google has the 
kind of a contrasting a contrasting situation because they will start by seeming like they're they might be more at least in my estimation like like they're more customer oriented but then you can kind of see how maybe they're moving less towards that and and, and closer to to their mission of data mining everything if if you believe in conspiracy theories or reality depending on who you talk to yeah if you if, if you follow conspiracy theorists mm-hmm. or normal people it depends <laughs> i mean yeah i i saw that on twitter and i i kind of quick read through it i think i don't know where i was probably on lunch break or something yeah it was like on friday wasn't it it was on friday it looks like yep mm-hmm. yeah. That's how so I, I saw it pretty quickly but yeah that was a good summary there yeah it's it's so interesting because I I I am split pretty pretty equally to both of these. I mean, heck, we're using a Google Hangout right now, exactly. and I use I use all Gmail stuff, Google Apps. I use it and I love it. It works really well, but almost all my hardware is Apple hardware. And and so like I I feel you know it's it's great to notice the difference between the two types, but their business models are also totally different too. Uh, you Absolutely, know, Apple will be can be arrogant, controlling, and inflexible. Because they're making those things in their hardware, and uh, Google has a harder time because how do you convince somebody to not use AOL anymore? You actually have to make <laughs> software, which is ridiculous, and who knows how Gmail actually works, but it must be insane. You have to make Gmail work and work across all these platforms in order to get anybody to not use AOL. Absolutely. Like, what a mission. Absolutely. Well, they've done it, and it works well. But on the same token, you know, like 15 years ago, instead of Google, it was Microsoft doing the same creepy, entitled, and overreachingness that yep. for sure was the definition of Microsoft at the time, if not embrace, extend, extinguish um, at the time. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, it, well, it begs the question, too, it, like, you can you can find that in a lot of companies. I mean, you can find it in Oracle. Yeah. Hi, Larry Ellison. And, uh, how was it? How, how was the weather on your island? Yeah, or on your on your multi million dollar catamaran. Yeah, that you race once a year mm-hmm. and gets knocked over all the time. I love watching that. By the way, I that, know. Oh my gosh, that thing is the best. What is it? Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, this is going in the show notes. Uh, Larry, <laughs> just just Google Larry Ellison catamaran. You will not regret it. Oh yeah, this this article is. Uh, Business Insider has an article that says uh, Larry Ellison has completely screwed up the America's Cup. So the America's Cup is a it's a sailing competition, I guess. Is how oh, I, it. I remember seeing this. They tipped over recently, didn't they? It is the best. I love it. Um, it is so entertaining. Basically, this huge intricate boat staffed by like teams of twenty people race around a lake or a river or an ocean or something. I I don't know bodies of water. You know, some some water thing. They're, they're sailing over it. And um, basically, Larry Ellison owns one of them. Um, but apparently, uh, <laughs> as of 2013, Ellison has spent so much money on it that he that nobody can beat him. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Sounds just is, like him, though. It's, it is such a Larry Ellison thing. And I mean, uh, I, w- I wonder. Um, w- yeah, it was really satisfying at Signal, um, the conference I was at last last uh, two weeks ago that I mentioned in the last podcast. Um the the CEO of Twilio, the company that was starting the conference, was was uh, making some awesome Larry Ellison jokes. I'll see if I can find some to to go in the show notes here. I might not be able to, but um, any any Larry Larry Ellison joke or Larry Ellison reference is always really funny to me. Because from that from the Business Insider 2013 article, it says each team, with the exception of New Zealand, there are only four this year, is backed by an individual billionaire and has spent between sixty five and a hundred million dollars so far. That is. Week. That is beautifully disgusting. I cannot think of yeah. <laughs> that is beautifully disgusting. Well, when one billionaire uh, comes in and buys out a team that has so much money to do any t- tiny tweak, no one can compete. So other billionaires have to come in. Yeah, absolutely. So, did you guys have you all ever listened to uh, Bonanza, which is uh, uh, on Relay FM? So that's Mike Hurley. And, I know uh, it exists. I just haven't listened. So there's an episode that is important for you all to listen to, um, and it is episode two, if I if I recall correctly. I could be completely wrong about this. Yes, this is it. Um, it's 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 called International Rescue, and I'm going to put it in the show notes here. But um, basically, what they uh, what what Mike and Matt have done. Uh, this is this is a very old episode, but yep, I see you you got it in the show notes for me, which is awesome. Um, they 
at, at the beginning of this podcast, they decided to make like a like a fantasy relay race where they took startup CEOs or, or tech company CEOs and they pitted them against each other in like a Hunger Games sort of competition. Um, <laughs> that was like an international relay race, which was a pun on the name of their podcast network. Nice. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, but basically, they picked everybody but Larry Ellison, which made me kind of sad because, of course... I, I, you know, there was Elon Musk, uh, Tim Cook, and uh, uh, Richard Branson. You know, everyone mm-hmm. else was there, um, but no Larry Ellison. Uh, and eventually, I think on episode three, which is entitled "Snapchat Cash Cats," um, which is pretty awesome. I mean, I love Bonanza's, you know, tagline: "An important show about nothing in particular." <laughs> totally, it's great. <laughs> and then episode four's show notes just say, uh, "We'd like to apologize before you even hit play." Like that is. That is so awesome. I wish I could write that about a show. <laughs> you can learn about ours. <laughs> oh. Well, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll see. Uh, Might have to yeah. make a different series about that. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So should we uh, wrap this up then? Maybe we should. Uh, we've we ha- we had a a good uh, a good episode too. We've, yeah. we've kept with it, and it's looking pretty great. Yeah, this was uh pretty good for episode 2. So I heard I heard uh there's traveling going on soon. Yes, that's right. I'm going to be out of state and out of country and out of sight and out of mind if these are all four things that will probably be happening. Um yes. I I I will probably need to do some follow-up next next time we speak probably. about uh, about how how the heck somebody gets internet access abroad because I don't know how that will happen because I'm certainly so not going plane. to Verizon tomorrow or next sunday right or you said it was monday yeah uh, next sunday and monday it's going to be about 14 to 15 hours of of uh travel time so you can buy plain internet and then sit in the toilet and record this podcast oh that's gonna cost a fortune that would be awesome <laughs> and i really wish i could do that we'll have to see we'll see what uh what the airline has in store for me it's uh it's air canada so we'll we'll have to yeah um, Hopefully, hopefully, we'll uh, I'll, I'll 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 show them how much I enjoy the CBC and yes. and uh, poutine and, Tom, and mm-hmm. Tom Tom Hortons is that a yep. thing? Tom yep. Hortons, yep. Yep. Tim Hortons, um, and uh, Canadian bacon, uh, and and maybe maybe they will have pity on me and yes. uh, and, and let me record with you guys because th- yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, but... they'll just push you out of the plane. <laughs> oh, geez, that would that's... be bad. That's not the that's not the Canadian hospitality that I that I know and love. You don't think so? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Any which way that that is where I will oh, be. Another but, uh, oh, another one. Oh, I I I need help. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so where can we um, find you on the internet then? Yes. So even though I will I will I will probably be kind of silent over the next week. In general terms, you can find me on Twitter. I'm uh, Brandon M N. So Brandon underscore M N. Brandon spelt with an A and an O. Um and r and an n and a d how it always is is there a b in it yeah. no well yeah there's at least one okay there's there's two but the second one's silent yes um, of course hidden right. so yeah with with display none tags so <laughs> so so you don't get any seo on that right yeah exactly no okay. no seo but that that's okay I, I like it that way yeah i get it yeah that's that's probably the best way to track me down yep and how about you brian you can find me on Twitter at bman479 or at tech479 or my website brian.me. There's nothing new as I, there usually isn't. So <laughs> maybe go there once and check back in a month or two. Yeah, I feel the same way. My blog, just idle. Like yeah, I'll, so- I'll put air messages on there when I run into them, but that's about it. I should do a review of my mouse and keyboard. That yeah, do fun. it. You do should it. do it. You should totally do, do it. I'll write a note to myself. You can you can use your iPhone and record like um you know with the 240 frames per second thing. You can record yourself hitting the keys or hitting the mouse button like yes. being real epic like. That'd be cool. That would be awesome. Extra dramatic. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, but while we're while we're still talking about our personal websites, just a heads up to our listeners to not try to find me at johnsonandmen.org <laughs> because that is now officially retired. I decided to just kind of to uh um i think the phrasing i used was was put it down for the long nap which is an interstellar reference nice um oh i love interstellar we should talk about it sometime we should we should do i need to make another show the nexus at the movies (laughs) i think i think we might let's do it okay well i'll work on that this week then we we, will be 10 minute podcast that's great we will have we will have all the great shows excellent uh yes so that is going away there are exciting new things that will take its place um 
but uh, but yeah, you, you, that is one place where you cannot find me this week. It still works right now, though. So it does, but there should be a. Is there? A, there's a, a banner there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I had fun making that banner. That was a party. How long did it take? Uh, it took about five minutes. <laughs> I just had to push it to Heroku. Um, that is the best yeah, kind of party. Know. Yep, indeed. So, Ryan, where can we find you? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course, on the Google+, Plus, which is where I post pictures of pretty much everything. You got that down. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. Okay, well, it's been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy listening to this whole thing, and of course, The Fringe, and have a good one. Bye, everybody. Creating beautiful objects that are as simple and pure as they are functional. Well, that's always been our goal at Apple. Oh, wait, I mean, it's space gray. <laughs> it's actually your good friend called Linux. There are no drivers in Linux, and therefore, audio sucks. Yay. Absolutely. No, that, that's awesome. It's so cool that you get to go back. You're, you're going to be back for a whole semester, is that? Right. Be there August 14th to December 28th. Oh, wow. That's going to be it's awesome. It's not an to come to my house and take my stuff while I'm gone. <laughs> to anyone listening. That's right, Andrew. Oh, very nice. Search is going to search, 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 search. Search is going to search, 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 search. Search is going to search, 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 search. Search is going to search, 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 search.